Hey, welcome back. So this is where we ended the previous video. The basic idea was to try and get a simple understanding of what the news vendor model is. All right, let's get rid of the clutter so that you know we can make better sense. Now all this thing, let's take it to the left of the screen. So what did we say? In cases when we do not know the exact value of demand, there's some kind of variability. Well, we could commit two mistakes. One, we could have two less and face angry customers. And though that's the underage cost, the extra money that you could have made by having that extra product. And if we have two less, we would end up with too many products, too many products that we need to scrap, salvage, and that's why we need to pay the overage cost. So let's understand this better by using some concrete examples. Now let's assume there's this product which has an average demand of 150 units per day. Ah, oh, the word average is because it's not exactly 150 units per day. Someday it is less, someday it is more. It could be 130 one day, it could be 170 next day, but the average is 150 units per day. Now let's say for this product, we decide to stock 155 units, right? And so the days when the demand is greater than 155 units, we would have unsatisfied angry customers. And that's a potential loss of sale that we could have done. So we'd have to bear the underage costs. But on days when the demand is lesser than 155 units, we would end up with excess stock, material which we are not able to sell, and we would have to scrap and dispose of. That's the overage cost. So now, so are you beginning to get, I'm sure, some understanding of how these two costs would impact? Uh, how much material should I order or stock with me? Um, let's get some better sense. So we have two products, very similar. Uh, both have a demand of 150 units per day. So the cost price for product A is $10. Selling price is $15. So the cost of underage is obviously $5, 15 minus 10. The salvage value is $2 and that makes the overage cost of cost price minus salvage value, uh, which is $8. Product B, if you look at it, it's exactly similar except that the selling price is $35. It's like a cosmetic, right? Product A could be a grocery product, low margin. Product B could be cosmetic, high margin. Now, this high margin product, um, just because it's 35, the underage cost become $25. So the question here is, should we keep equal stocks of both A and B? Think about it. If we do not serve one customer of product A, we have a potential loss of $5. But if we do not serve one customer of product B, we have a potential loss of $25. While the risk is same in both cases, $8. So we are more, we would more like to satisfy a customer of product B than a customer of product A. Does this make sense? So given that the cost of underage of product B is so much higher, I would not like to have an unsatisfied customer for product B because I am potentially losing a lot of revenue. So, so the idea here is a very simple idea since they have the same overage, but B has higher, higher underage. I would typically stock higher stocks of B and the intuitive answer of how much to stock tells me that if for products with high underage, which is the high cost of lost sale where customers are very important, I would probably have high stocks. But for products which are highly perishable, maybe high overage cost, where the cost of excess is very high, I would have low stocks. Well, in the next video, we are going to build on this intuition and evolve um, a simple method to find out how to actually convert this into a fixed number. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.